within the realm of remote sensing and Earth observation uh, that is looking down onto the Earth from satellites, uh, the Julia programming language actually offers a lot of possibilities. However, not a lot of people actually are using the Julia in this realm, at least where we are from. And one of the reasons is because there are not a lot of packages. So in this talk, we would like to present one such package, the SAR processing.jl, a flexible package for the SAR data processing. And I'm joined on stage with, uh, from Iga, but we were actually um, doing this work with two of our friends, Aigil Libot and Simon Lupemba. Now, disclaimer number one is that we are all working with satellite data. We are by no means uh, Julia experts, uh, but we still find this package very relevant. Disclaimer number two is that we did this work uh, a while back and we are not very active anymore. Great. So now uh, for a few more others came in. So who here knows about SAR data, synthetic aperture radar data? Okay, there are two. Great. That's, that's good. <laughs> well, this leads me to the agenda where we'll start with a small introduction to SAR data for the others and then we'll go into the, as an introduction of the SAR package itself. So. SAR stands for Synthetic Aperture Radar Data, and it's a type of sensor that you mount on board a satellite that is then creating an image like we saw just here. Um, now, a SAR is an active sensor, meaning that it is not using the illumination of the sun like a regular camera, and it is instead uh, providing its own illumination in so-called pulses or whatnot. So you have an electromagnetic radiation that is transmitted through the atmosphere from the SAR satellite. It hits the target. It's being scattered in different directions. And some of it goes back to the satellite. And by comparing what you sent down to what you receive, you can actually say something about the physical characteristics of, of the target, such as the geometry, the roughness, surf, uh, moisture, and a bunch of other things. Now, SAR data is complex, meaning that you're actually getting a real part and an imaginary part. From this, you can create an amplitude and a phase image, um, meaning that in each pixel, for each polarization in your image, you actually have both amplitude and phase. And it actually takes a bit to ex fully exploit both of these things. We'll get to back that later. So again, this is another uh, example of a SAR image where you can see uh, it's just an intensity image, pretty much. So in this package, we focused on making a, something that other people that are working with SAR data can use, such that we will take the, let's say, raw data, pre-process it, and create data in a way that other can use to create their own applications. Uh, some of those we'll talk about later. And this is where you can get it from. So you can get it online from GitHub, hosted at the Air Center, and then just using SAR processing, and then you have it. Uh, we'll show this later at the last slide as well. So it's then straightforward to actually open the image. Um, so here is a case where we have opened, opened a sample of a SAR image. And as you can see, it is indeed complex. So we have some amplitude and some well, real and imaginary part. And then to show the image, we have one here. This is a Sentinel-1 SAR image to those that knows about different SAR satellites, uh, where we have clamped the values because these are 16-bit and they have some very, very high intensities, uh, some of these peaks. So in order to see something, clamp it. Um, but we can also see and work with other types of SAR data. Uh, here are some free from, from two different satellites. If you know about them, we have the ISI and the Radarsat Constellation mission with different resolutions, as you can see. But these are all amplitude um, images. In order to work with the phase content, you actually need to do a, quite a bit of work, uh, which we have done for, in this case, only the Sentinel-1 uh, data, where you can see the metadata here. And it is, in fact, a structure of a bunch of other structures that has a lot of different things that we have uh, computed and calculated. As an example, you can see that the, the time is not in date time format because it's not accurate enough, so it's indeed in float 64 because we do uh, speed of flight calculations. Um, this we have only implemented for the Sentinel-1 SAR satellite for those of you that know SAR satellites. Um, and now on to some of the features. So first off, of course, this right here is to some maybe a noisy image, but this is in fact a really, really homogeneous image. And this is due to some noise-like phenomenon called speckle. So you would want to create some sort of speckle filter that makes this very homogeneous. This is called speckle filtering, and we have implemented a, a few of those as well. 
This is the so-called Lee Speckle filter, where you can play with some of the parameters in order to fill the image as you want to. Um, and then you have a nice image, and then you want to work with it in one way or another. One of the things that are really nice to do is to do object detection. Uh, so there are a bunch of object detectors in the image suite in Julia. However, within the SAR community, people like to do other object detectors that use the uh, statistics of the image and also where you can know how many false alarms you approximately get. One of them is the so-called constant false alarm rate, or CFAR. We have implemented a, a few of those as well. This is one, this is another. And from these detected objects from the CFAR, you can then easily extract the objects you want to work with and do other analysis if you want to. Great. Now we will move to the interferometric synthetic aperture radar part of the package. So first, let's briefly explain what is uh, SAR interferometry. The uh, so-called INSAR is a measurement of the phase change between two SAR imagery acquired over the same terrain, but in a different dates, different times. Uh, yeah, by uh, measurement of this phase change, we can actually derive a very precise um, ground displacement with a, an accuracy up to a few millimeters. So this is why it's so exciting. Um, uh, you can see on the presentation that Sentinel-1 uh, single look complex data, which contains uh, information about the face. And this is the information that we are work on mainly uh, in, with INSER. Um, on the right part of the image, you can see some topography of the terrain, probably some mountains or hills. In the upper part, there is a small city, which actually has a really strong um, backscattering signal. And here at the bottom, there is some circular change, um, circular target, which is probably uh, fields. We have chosen this um, area because we know um, that an earthquake happened some time ago, and we wanted to see if there was any mm, ground displacement occur. Um, well, uh, this is um, this is interferogram, a typical product of INSAR processing, um, which has the typical uh, fringes, the the pattern, um, also typical for uh, ground displacement. Um, another feature possible with uh, SAR processing.jl is calculation of the coherence. Uh, coherence is a degree of similarity between two images um, acquired over the same area. And basically, um, the high intensity pixels are bright uh, and uh, have a high coherence, which means um, there was no change between two acquisitions, while the dark pixels uh, have a low coherence and we expect there was a change. So on the fields, there was definitely some change over there, like a harvest. Uh, and then we have a coherence phase, which is actually a um, filtered ver version of the phase that we showed previously. Um, coherence phase, um, we can observe um, some noise uh, in the fields uh, over there. It's because uh, fields had uh, very low coherence values and then there should not be covered by fringes. And to sum up, uh, SAR processing.jl uh, has uh, features like uh, geocoding, INSER, uh, working with Sentinel-1 data, um, object detection and speckle filtering. And um, there is still a lot of work to be done in the package, but it was kind of a proof of concept. Uh, we believe that it makes a lot of sense to implement the entire SAR processing chain uh, in pure Julia because working with SAR data is extremely computationally demanding and requires many, many processing steps. So, um, yeah, uh, our main objective uh, was to create an ecosystem of people who want to develop the package and move it forward. But also other objectives are, um, you know, to create a... Uh, application-driven tool uh, used by many, uh, many people with a transparent code um, and to remove the use of uh, commercial software, but also to be user-friendly and in one uh, language.
And that's all for today. Um, thank you for your time. And um, you are more than welcome to play with the package with your data or to contribute uh, and to ask questions if you have any. Thank you so much. Let's thank our speakers. Um, I think we have time for one quick question before we go to the next talk. Questions from the audience? Yes. Sure. Um, I'm more familiar with satellite operations models and simulation of satellite toolbox. Did you use satellite toolbox or do you plan to use that in the future for satellite propagation? No. No. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Short answer, no. no. <laughs> Okay, let's thank our speakers again. You are welcome to uh, reach out to them for questions in our breaks.